Uh, hey everyone, um, I'm Johnson, and today I want to present uh, Don't Trust Verify, the case of slashing from a popular Ethereum Explorer, uh, which is a work based on uh, 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 caused by Zhu Guo, Jia Sun, and me. So first of all, I want to introduce uh, like what is a uh, Byzantine fault tolerance based consensus protocols. Uh, so there's very robust set of research uh, uh, like uh, has been published uh, in history to uh, prove some properties about uh, some uh, proposed uh, some a set of proposed like PBFT um, algorithm that would reach consensus um, in um, deterministically or probabilistically uh, within a finite uh, finite period of time, and um, but the um, so so basically, it's, uh, consensus can be uh, reached after like multiple multiple rounds of uh, voting, and the voting would contain the information or attestation uh, about some previous observations of uh, indep independent validators in the system or um, operators in the system. And uh, usually, it requires some assumptions about uh, the system. For example, like uh, a super majority of the nodes in the system need to be uh, honest or following the rules, and so a reason times that like we want to make the blockchain permissionless, which means we want to allow a validator to join it permissionlessly, and uh, uh, that system need to um, work need to work under um, more um, like open system, uh, and so that's why Vitalik and uh, any other also uh, propose like proof of stake system, uh, which is Casper, and um, to add additional properties that we want on top of the PBF PBFT protocols. And the, the key properties of that is uh, we want the system to, um, uh, like, uh, we want this system. So, this uh, original traditional PBFT system usually is um, uh, cryptographically correct and uh, it follows a set of rules. And based on that, it will be guaranteed to reach consensus and have the safety properties and liveness properties. Um, now, here, we Add the uh, proof of stake, which is a crypto economics um, safety. So basically, uh, in such system, we want to implement the uh, slash. Um, so slash is basically an abstraction of code that implements certain pre-specified logics. And we can imagine it to be like set up if then uh, else statements. So if we observe some bad behaviors um, in a system, then we want to uh, slash or uh, punish uh, the stake, and uh, when uh, so, so it, 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 the centralized implementation is definitely possible uh, in, in theory. So, uh, like a centralized uh, governor uh, would be able to uh, that is always trusted, but we don't want the system to be trusted. That's the whole point of the, of building a decentralized uh, blockchain. So, so uh, that's why we uh, basically um, want anyone be able to submit uh, slash proof, and uh, the system need to. Um, reach a consensus on the slash uh, observed behaviors, and then uh, ask you the slash uh, properly. So that reach, uh, gave us the question, like what is the contractable variables in the system? Contractable variables means you need to write uh, the rules, which is uh, slashing conditions. For example, if you do something bad, we need to contract it and write code to uh, implement it so that everyone can reach agreement because those nodes are machines that would follow specific rules. So if those events or variables are not contractable or too abstract, then we won't, there's a possibility that this slash rules won't be able to perfectly implement it and captured in reality. So, um, uh, yeah, because uh, because like uh, the session behaviors uh, is not a part of the PBFT. It's actually an additional layer on top of PBFT that enforces this uh, proof of stake, uh, the functionality of uh, or the correctness of proof of stake system. So if it's not captured, then it won't get a slash, and the system is is actually uh, mere mere function, even though it follows the PBFT uh, on the underlying uh, underlying algorithm it still works. So. Um, so basically, we have this many proposed like different solutions, uh, like proof of stake layer one protocols, optimistic layer two applications that try to um, like try to uh, uh, as a uh, as a, a, a valuable and and actually functional solution. So 
And, and we, want, we, we kind of want to um, investigate and, and practice like whether uh, this uh, all slash uh, all slash uh, slashable behaviors uh, actually got slashed in reality because uh, from well, like to, uh, the other two co-authors are uh, like have uh, economy background, and um, since it's crypto economics, uh, security is not a guaranteed to uh, have all the slash behaviors uh, slashed. So we do this empirical analysis on like 1.75 million blocks, and we basically check following the uh, the consensus uh, spec, and we check whether there's double proposal, there's double attestation and surround the rules. And surprisingly, uh, actually, actually, uh, first of all, like, um, so first of all, slash does happen. So th this is a, a validator that got slashed because he did something wrong. So slash does happen. And, but it's, but uh, we also find some, uh, something interesting. So here is like, this is a double vote. So it's, it's pretty small, but basically uh, you can see like this, this validator uh, actually vote for the same target which is the, um, the, the the frontier, which is the frontier block uh, block number, uh, epoch number that he observes. And for the same target, he actually voted different signing rules or different block contents, basically. And, and so th this is, uh, the yellow one is the same validator votes for the same target by different signing rules. And that's a double vote, but th this validator does not uh, get slashed. So, so if it's not slashed, then is that a consensus wrong? Uh, like uh, uh, that would be huge. But I mean, it's also surround vote we discovered from this data, and uh, uh, this validator actually make a surround vote which should be slashed, and it's still not got slashed till today. So th th so then we, we basically explore a little bit more, and we found like seventy five percent of like variation fear to be slashed, and uh, and if that's true, then then Ethereum is like kind of, I mean. That 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 would be that would be kind of ridiculous. Right? So, but uh, but maybe just like explore about because we use API like the, the data is like there, there are only few like very large data providers. Uh, so we basically use one of the lar largest explorers uh, data to get uh, to to analyze and uh, make some tweaks, of course. Like and the 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 the, the people like get out get back back up, uh, get back to us and. They, they, they propose like probably explorer data has something wrong with the uh, a be, uh, like dealing with a uh, phenomenon called phantom attestations, which, which is like when there's some uh, subtle errors when synchronizing, uh, when the node is miss, like a fear to synchronize with the majority of the nodes. So, so what causes the phantom attestations, right? So we tend to believe it's not a consensus error. And so, um, basically, we first first of all, uh, cryptographic uh, truth still works here. So Ethereum works is like it aggregates lots of public key. So it basically aggregates a public key. It uses like uh, BRS uh, like aggregate um, uh, aggregation like uh, verifications. It's, uh, it's cryptographic schemas to verify whether um, a set of validators actually all sign the same uh, signing rules. Um, uh, and so basically you aggregate the public key to get an aggregated public key, you aggregate the, uh, the content and you, you recover the signing rule. And uh, you can prove that a set of validators actually signed the signing rule. So if we can prove that the behavior we observed before actually are, that validator, that, that validator like, the, the misbehave actually signed the two different signing rules, then we can cryptographically prove that this validator actually double votes. So we don't need to, but, uh, actually, um, uh, what do we get is actually one of them is correct. So one of them is verified, but the second one is, is, is not verifiable, which means like that sign is not happening actually. So why that signing actually not happening, but it displayed on the Explorer. So um, that's a, a little bit more subtle because that question, uh, th that basically we need to Get deeper about like how the um, how the comedy schedule is how the chem chem comedy schedule is, is computed. So uh, it basically like a uh, comedy schedule is computed based on a previous epoch information. Like uh, and uh, there's a set of but 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 the previous comedy is a local concept, which means each node locally would compute that. But it, that community schedule is not same for any node. So what we observe is the phantom attestation. Um, is produced by 
a node that observes uh, uh, that observes some like uh, delayed version of uh, the pr previous epoch, and then it computes a comedy schedule and use that to encode because validate, the validator said that the voters for the uh, block would be encoded use a bit array. And so that pretty array is produced based on some um, delayed data. So, and uh, then, uh, so, so that's, that's why when, but the Explorer does not know that. So uh, Explorer will basically recover it using the, the, right, uh, the right comedy schedule that, uh, it thinks uh, it consider it, it perceives, and uh, then it would uh, then it would produce the wrong results. So and then can we recover this wrong like uh, wrong like validator because that validator number is actually wrong, but um, it, we actually can recover it. So what, what do we we basically brute force all the public key and uh, check which public key can uh, can make this uh, verification BRS verification works and. Actually, we can recover. So basically, that thing happens, but it's different validator sign, and it just it just re and confirm that our thesis is right. Basically, it's because the validator, uh, the comedy schedule is is a is a is a uh, delayed and uh, not synchronized with the majority nodes. So yeah, basically, have a le le lesson. So basically, um, here is like uh, Ethereum. So basically, yeah, Ethereum staking. Um, and slashing mechanisms seem, seem to be working fine. And, uh, um, and basically uh, we have this, uh, you know, we have this off chance uh, slashers um, slash all the slashable behaviors uh, throughout the history of Ethereum, which is pretty uh, surprising result, uh, which is pretty like impressive result. And uh, the honest validators, um, and, and, yeah, and, and basically, so we can probably argue that it's incentive compatible to the catcher by by leaders as they do syncretic events, and uh, um, and uh, even though they actually do not get rewards, it's the proposal who get rewards, not a slasher get rewards. So economically, there's some like a uh, um, tricky thing there. But uh, we only do this for Ethereum. Ethereum is the largest, uh, the most secure uh, blockchain. We want to do it for other. Blockchain, which we, we think it has a high probability of uh, producing the wrong results and uh, uh, have some slashable behaviors not slashed, especially when the rules are not very clearly defined and contractable, and uh, uh, which we, we believe there's a high possibility. So also like there's also uh, as, uh, like basically induces an additional question like the centralizing. There's so many like we argue like the underlying blockchain is very fundamentally decentralized. That's true, but the problem is that all the services and the information aggregator built on top of it are completely centralized and produce the wrong results. Even including some oracles that like you know uh, some oracles that claim to be the most decentralized ones still are extremely centralized in today. So which. Uh, it's, it's against the whole point of uh, building a blockchain. And so, uh, yeah, and, and a deep understanding of this consensus age case would help you uh, help us uh, produ uh, produce a recoverable and transparent uh, uh, d data data providers and data sources. Yeah, and this is basically, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you for this very interesting talk. Are there any questions in the audience? Oh, clarifying question, right? What is the uh, surround model? Yes, so a surround model, yeah, it's a, there are many online like resources which uh, they also uh, disagree with each other because uh, actually, it's, so it's, it, it's, it is some like go, go code that, uh, but it's different clients also have this diff very small difference uh, like uh, uh, implementation. But in the official spec, uh, it's defined as the source. Uh, the, so basically, the source and the, the target would be surrounded by any other source and target uh, voted by the same validator. So basically, if you vote like one uh, source as uh, epoch one and the target as five, and then you vote again with uh, source uh, two and the target four, then the one five would uh, surround the two four. And that is impossible because uh, you have to reach the uh, Justified stage before finalize. So if you first observe, uh, you first uh, like basically commit to one and five, then you shouldn't you shouldn't be uh, be able to do, produce like two four. So there must uh, is completing results. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, so here you have that it's incentive compatible to catch violators. Yep. Um, has there been any like formal analysis on actually looking at who's getting rewards from doing the slashing, where the rewards are going and how much rewards those are, and then how much, um, I guess, gas fees and opportunity costs they're giving up to enact the slashing uh, to, to actually show that it is incentive compatible or? Yeah, we, 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 it's kind of backwards driven. So we, we, we analyzed the result and, the, you know, in the, all the years, like, uh, I mean, Beacon Chain is actually pretty young, but I mean, all the, I mean, it's in the period of time, like uh, Beacon Chain, which is proof of stake chain uh, uh, version of Ethereum, uh, wrong is like, there's no, like, uh, there's no, uh, there's no single event that is not, that's slashable, but not slash. So that's that's why we think backward think that is incentive compatible. But from the but the, the truth is like the slasher basically volunteer. That nowadays they won't get they, they get zero rewards. So if they slash, so you can run some software, everyone can download and and it, it's similar to optimistic rollup, uh, like optimistic breach, where you uh, any one of them as long as one is like honest and submitted the proof, then um, the system kind of be fine because uh, you just need need one person like run the software off chain. And then catch the slashable behaviors. I, I guess probably Vitalik is running. Uh, some someone is just running that. And and then if you submit that, the proposal will get the reward. Uh, or like get, uh, 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 and the slasher would be slashed. But uh, that reward is not distributed to slasher now. Uh, I think I think that's last time I checked. Yeah. I uh, would also have. Oh, you go ahead. Oh, uh, for, okay, but I was saying we're, we're, we're looking at the explorer. Um, which I which particular explorer is that, and, and uh, relatedly, relatedly, would you compare data from different explorers? Oh yeah, so yeah, so uh, other the explorer or data provider does not have the data we need to recover. That is the most detailed uh, explorer, and that's the largest explorer for beacon beacon chart. It's called beacon chart in. So it's the beacon chart in, and uh, it's basically I think it's the uh, largest that, that has the uh, taxation data because all the the other data sources don't even have the test data that we need to uh, generate the uh, cryptographic proof uh, that we need. So it, and probably you need to run like a full node to get all of the uh, data. Yeah, I can have the node or, uh, yeah. So my, my question would be about the organized crimes that you mentioned here um, that there are yet to occur. Um, could you elaborate a little bit on how, how those could look like? In the context of, yeah, validators slashing. Yeah, I think, I think like I think Ethereum is the most secure chain. I mean, in some chains, uh, we we previous study or uh, I think we have some experience with like the it's like it's, it's it has already happened. Um, and this chain, I don't want to mention name, but it's like already happens like hard hard many more times, basically based on these according attacks, and, and some uh, on some certain software bugs. And uh, so Ethereum, I think, um, so if you, uh, so I think it's uh, lots of studies in the like the consensus layer and that, that consensus layer, if like someone submit, uh, I mean, enough validators, uh, I feel like it's basically the intuition that less than like uh, two thirds of the, less than two thirds of these validators need to like, uh, like uh, could, could just uh, uh, do some like attack that, Oh, probably. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually think of one. I actually think of one. And basically, it's like you can, you can, uh, you can uh, basically because it's uh, validators are, are generating this uh, vote and uh, in committee. Committee is smaller than the, the, so basically in the committee, if you happen to have this enough in validators in that committee, and you you control like a, a two thirds of that, you can generate uh, the uh, fake message to other in the same committee, and that whole committee would. Get uh, that the whole community basically could get and uh, uh, get get fake data. And uh, since like it's comedy by comedy, it's not all comedy that like, would vote. So in reality, since this kind of like um, it's for like it's it's for the efficiency, but it's like then it takes like less than two thirds of the uh, number of validators to to uh, to um, make the system like uh, either misbehave or uh, hard for a certain epoch. It could like be easily to a uh, hard one epoch, and then later it could go up because comedy would rotate it, and randomly. So you cannot consistently do it, but you probably can do one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.